Giannis Antetokounmpo from Chris Middleton. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey folks, what's good? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at current NBA players that would survive the 1980s and 1990s. But before we dive into it, let me ask you guys for a small favor. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and even more important, click the notifications button so you always get notified once I upload a new video. All right, enough said, let's do it. So, I narrowed it down to four different players, and of course LeBron James could have been one of those players, but I wanted to discuss some other players that also should be on my list. So let's start with number one. The first player on my list is going to be one of my favorite point guards of all time, and my favorite point guard in today's NBA, Chris Paul. He's not only a player that has an old school mentality, but especially now in the later part of his career, you can really see that he has a very high basketball IQ and he has great fundamentals. If you compare him to other players, like for example Russell Westbrook, who's suffering in his early 30s, you can clearly see that Chris Paul never relied on his athleticism. To the contrary, one major thing I like about him is that he's a pass first point guard. He would fit in nicely in an era with guards like John Stockton, Jason Kidd and all of those guys. His ball handling skills are far superior to many guards of the 1990s, so there's no question that he would also be a great player in the 80s and 90s. In all honesty guys, I wish we would have more point guards like him in today's NBA and I'm pretty pretty sure that when he will retire, he will leave a huge hole. I'm, I'm saying that Chris Paul is having a great year, but you're making us feel like we are hating if we don't, if we don't feel like he's eat. like he if, should be the MVP, I don't understand. If, if any, if if a guy traded for a guy on a last place team, if a, if a, if, a, if a team made a trade in the off season and they went from last place to first place, why would we not mention that guy for MVP? That's a very fair question. And the next player on my list is also my favorite player in today's NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo, aka the Greek Freak. Now, what can I say about Giannis that hasn't been said like a million times before? Well, basically nothing. But I think it's safe to say that Giannis is playing in the wrong era of NBA basketball. I wish he was there like in the 1990s because then old school fans would appreciate him even more. But on the other hand, he's now even more outstanding because the NBA is not as physical as it used to be. Of course, it would be a lot tougher for Giannis to score in the 1980s and 1990s, but because this guy is working so hard on his game, I'm pretty sure he would figure it out. Would he be an MVP type of a player? Yes, I think so. But obviously, it would be a lot tougher for him. Charles Oakley recently said that he thinks that Giannis would be an average player in the 1980s. And with all due respect, Oak, no. Giannis is great and one of the few players in today's NBA who would also be great players in the 1980s and 1990s. So what say you, basketball fans? Would Giannis be an MVP caliber player in the 80s and the 90s? Yes or no? Scan the QR code, Zeke, in the 80s. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a feeling. Uh, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Wait, come on, let, let's be for real now. Okay. I remember in the 80s, there was a guy by the name of Ralph Sampson. Okay. Ralph Sampson and Akeem Olajuwon. Before Ralph Sampson got hurt, they were saying that Ralph Sampson was going to be, I remember Bill Russell saying, Ralph Sampson can be the greatest player ever because of his skill set, his ability to handle the ball, his ability to play around the baskets, his ability to block shots. Giannis is today's Ralph Sampson. And all these guys talking about, well, Giannis couldn't play and all this. Dude, 
Giannis going around Oakley. Giannis going around all them. He dunking on them. He let them. He bigger. He faster. He stronger. You can talk all that stuff because you don't play no more. You can talk all that stuff because you got gray hair and you sitting on the sidelines smoking cigars about what you used to do. That dude would dog you every single time y'all stepped on the court. Now, you may hit him hard. Okay, all right. After you hit him hard, you ain't got no game. You ain't got no game. Okay, so if you hit me and I be like, okay, that's all you got? <laughs> you ain't got nothing but a hit? I'm getting ready to mess over you. And, and Giannis, just like he treating them now, they, he's bigger, faster, stronger. He'd be dunking on all them, left-handed, just like Ralph Sampson was dunking on them. Giannis would be doing the same thing. So all y'all stop it with, he wouldn't dominate in the 80s. We ain't never seen no dude like this coming to our league. And give him his props, give him his credit. He would dog anybody in the 80s, 90s, 2000, and, 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 and 3020 when we get there. And the next player on my list is Luka Doncic. When Luka was a kid, he was already playing against grown men in Europe. I mean, this already should show you that this kid is really the real deal. Luka is a player who's not the quickest, not the most explosive guy, but he has all the tools and a great all-around game with a very high basketball IQ. Just like Larry Bird, Luka beats you in so many different ways, it's impossible to stop him. Already in his rookie season, he was dominating and he already had a go-to move, which is super rare nowadays. I could see Luka Doncic on any team in the 80s and 90s and he would be very successful. The only thing I think he would have to adjust is his flopping. I still hope that this is just a phase and he will stop that nonsense right away. Patrick Beverly, who's one of the best defenders in today's NBA, had the following to say about Luka Doncic. What makes him so tough and so different really than say a Ja or a Steph? I know all these guys are different, Ja, Steph, Dame, but Luka specifically, what makes him such a tough matchup? One that his, his intelligence, like uh He's physical as fuck and flops at the same time, which is the exact same thing I do. <laughs> physical as fuck, motherfucker. Swipe at me, I'm a, oh, she's trying to kill me. Right, get him, get him, he's trying to kill me. And he's the exact same way, he initiates the contact, hits you, and it's not like, you know, as basketball players, you can feel like, you know, the muscle, and it's like, it's not muscle with him. And that's no, you know, discredit to his body or anything, but that's just how he's made up. You know, it's that kind of that, that, that 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 flabby solid type of type of you know that uh uh just leaning Look, on he's me. bigger he's stronger he's gonna shoot over you right here it doesn't matter go on jump out back it up play at my pace i'm not the fastest guy don't jump the highs but i'm playing at my pace and there's nothing you can do about it right here i'm sizing you up again at my pace not dribbling too fast i already know what i want to do when i shoot, step to the left shoot to the left he plays at his pace and I think, I think this is what makes him a great player. And the next player on my list is Kawhi Leonard, AKA The Claw. Kawhi Leonard to me is one of the greatest players since the year 2000. And in all honesty, there are certain things I don't like about him. For example, that he used to sit out many games, but there's also no denying that this guy can really, really play. He's what the 80s and 90s players were all about. 100% on offense, 100% on defense. This guy has some of the quickest hands I've ever seen. And there's a reason why he's called the claw. And even though when he was in college and he was not that great offensive player, he really worked on his game. He became a deadly threat on offense and had a very, very good mid-range game. Also, he added a fadeaway jump shot to his game, which unfortunately not many players nowadays do. He's a very tough player and good enough to be a great player in the 1980s and 1990s. But that guy right there to me is the best complete basketball player in the world. If I need a basket or I need a stop, that guy right there is yes. the best player in the world. And that's no disrespect to Steph Curry. I know every time one of us old guys say anything about today's generation, we're old haters. Uh, we can't even be honest and fair on television anymore because we're just all haters. Steph Curry is a great, great offensive player. No disrespect. But that guy right there, he's amazing. I agree with you, Shaq. He's a so he's a better two-way player than LeBron James. 
Yes. You know, the last couple of weeks have been very critical of current NBA players. And I just wanted to be clear and explain to you guys that I personally would be very, very happy if the NBA would be a little bit different. If the players from today's NBA would be a little bit different. It's not like I'm enjoying hating on those players. I would love for the NBA to be better so I could enjoy the NBA again. But in this video, I just wanted to make sure that I also give credit to those players that I can actually watch and enjoy and who still have that old school mentality and yeah players as the topic of the video is that would survive the 1980s and 1990s and would be productive players back in the 1980s and 1990s anyway you guys i hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new to the show and i hope i'll see you next time on the basketball time machine